Since the establishment of the diplomatic relations between St. Lucia and the Republic of India from 1992, we have enjoyed cordial relations which have been further strengthened over the years through the undertaking of a series of cooperation projects in the areas such as education, human resource development, energy, disaster relief and health. And because of our shared values, because of our mutual interests, uh, India and St. Lucia have continued to broaden the scope of our bilateral relations through our mutual support at the UN and other international forums. Uh, this timely and most generous donation of medicine from the government of the people of India is testimony, I think, to the country's continued contribution to the advancement and the well-being of St. Lucia, especially in the face of the global coronavirus pandemic. As such, we are indeed grateful for this constant generosity of the government of India, and we certainly look forward to strengthening this relationship that we have been established for quite some, a number of years. At this time, um, it is my pleasure to call on to, uh, with some brief remarks, the Deputy Permanent Secretary, uh, Department of Health. The COVID-19 disease has been labeled a pandemic by the World Health Organization. For this reason, the approach towards managing COVID-19 is ideally a global response. Every country in the world shares the common threat posed by this pandemic and therefore would benefit from the guidance, assistance, and lessons learned from its global partners. Therefore, the Ministry of Health and Wellness extends its thanks to the government of the Republic of India for its generosity displayed here today um, through the, the donation, kind donation of medicines as well as other PPEs. And we, w we wish to assure you that this donation of medica medication and PPEs will go a long way towards our, our response to the COVID-19 threat in St. Lucia. Um, we at the Ministry of Health cannot stress, cannot emphasize any further the importance of um, preventative measures as it pertains to COVID-19. However, we recognize that there must be in preparation a response to any outbreaks that we may experience now and in the future. Therefore, we are very much appreciative of any effort by any of our global partners to assist us in this fight and response. And we look forward towards our continued cooperation as we share experiences and we share guidance and obtain lessons learned with our global partners. So make my, my remarks very brief. Um, let's hope in that we will not have to use this medication, but being very grateful to have it available to us. So in this regard, on behalf of the Minister and Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Health, I wish to thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of High Commissioner of India to St. Lucia, uh, Mr. Mahendra Singh Kanyal, he was not able to travel because of the travel restrictions. I am representing uh, him. And also on behalf of Indian Cultural Foundation, I am honored to be here along with Mr. Asnani, Dr. Suraj, and C.B. Gopal Krishna. Uh, to present this gift of medicines and medical supplies from the people of India and government of India to the happy people of St. Lucia and government of St. Lucia. And as you know, first of all, we are lucky to be living in this part of the world. <laughs> so far, so good, we are safe. At the same time, we are all currently engaged in fighting against this unknown enemy, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which has caused serious health, social, physical, economic, humanitarian challenges, which are unprecedented in scope and scale. Uh, India has, from the beginning of the crisis, has taken a preemptive, proactive, graded approach to control and contain spread of coronavirus. Uh, it made the fight into the people's movement and developed a digital app called Arogya Setu app, which predicts the emerging hotspots and which is being used by 140 million people across. As a result, the fatality rate in India is less than 2% and uh, the recovery rate is almost close to 70% as of now. And every day testing rate has 
crossed half a million per day as of now. And uh, almost 18 million healthcare workers are handling the COVID-19. And uh, the greatest thing it has done, one more thing, is about more than three quarter million people stranded outside India were transport to India during this crisis time safely. And Government of India has launched the biggest food security project to ensure that food and fuel are provided to all vulnerable sections of the society. The human trial of COVID vaccine in India is also begun. From the beginning of this crisis, uh, India under the able leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been outward focused and recognized the need for global engagement and has been engaged with the regional and global leaders and grouping across the world on a regular basis. External Affairs Minister of India, S. Jay Shankar, spoke to our external minister from St. Lucia uh, on COVID-19. India is also making its uh, medical and public health expertise and capacity available to the entire South Asian region. India has made a major effort to be a responsible member of the international community and take a far-sighted view that will stand in good stead in the post-pandemic world. India is committed to supporting its friends and partners in the collective fight against the pandemic, including by providing essential medical supplies, global access to medicines, vaccines, and medical equipment to combat COVID-19. And it is vital for all countries and people. India believes that there should be free and open sharing of medical research. Uh, and drugs and vaccines. In tune with this spirit, India has responded positively uh, to the worldwide demand of essential medicines for almost 150 countries. Basically, it has become a pharmacy of the world as of today. Uh, the countries which are assisted are from South Asia, Africa, Latin America, and Caribbean. India is committed to extend technical cooperation and contribute to capacity building and skill development here in St. Lucia. As per its requirements, India is also sharing its expertise, experience and best practices with its partner countries under EITEC program of Government of India. We encourage healthcare professionals and institutions in St. Lucia to participate in such webinars. The High Commissioner has been sharing information with the esteemed Foreign Ministry regarding such webinars as of now. The High Commission sincerely thank the Government of St. Lucia for the assistance extended to stranded Indians during this critical pandemic time. The High Commission also takes this opportunity to appreciate the dedication, commitment with which, under the able leadership of Prime Minister Chasne, government health workers and people of St. Lucia have been working to control and contain spread of coronavirus. We wish and pray that the situation will remain manageable for the public health services here in St. Lucia. With these words, compassion and vigilance are needed to fight against coronavirus. I gratefully thank you all. Jai Hind. This is a very small but significant ceremony. I think you would be aware that we were expecting a very high level visit of the President of India to St. Lucia and I, I, if I'm correct that visit already would have occurred had it not been for COVID. So that would have been a historic visit and in fact we had been making a lot of preparations for it. Uh, we still hope and expect that that can happen as soon as it is possible. And so this uh, ceremony here is what we are able to do for the moment, but it is so very significant. And in fact, I have to say how very honored and pleased I was to have received a call from the Foreign Minister of India, uh, right in the middle of the pandemic, in fact, when we were all stood at home and not able to come out. I received that call to say how very much uh, India, St. Lucia was on the mind of India and how India wanted to make this donation. Now, this is, as I said, a very, very small token of the support and cooperation we receive from India. 
uh, we're talking about the courses that are offered, not just to our young diplomats, but there are lots of skills courses that are offered to the, to the uh, people of St. Lucia by the government of India on a yearly basis. In fact, uh, I should be embarrassed to say that we are not even to take up, even able to take up all of the offers that are made to us routinely on a yearly basis to train um, not just people at the bachelor's level, but at the uh, level where uh, ordinary St. Lucians can benefit. We know that recently we received quite a substantial level of support from the government of India to care for uh, the extension of its skills program. So our relations with India started in 1982, formally, but we know we are family. I mean, we have a common ancestral uh, heritage that we share. And so even if our formal relations began in 1982, we, we know we are much more than diplomatic allies. And for this reason, we are just so very, very grateful uh, for the support that we've received from uh, from the government of, of, of India in our bilateral relations, in the support we get for the causes uh, that St. Lucia advocates that the Caribbean advocates on the world stage. Uh, we know that there is so much more we can do in our bilateral re relations, which is what we had been seeking to deepen and strengthen with the visit of your president here. So I want to say again to express our sincere appreciation on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia. I know Ambassador Kanyal, who's based in Suriname, would have been very, very happy to be here, to witness and to be part of this ceremony. I know he will be watching the uh, video of it, so I want to say a special greeting to him to let him know that he is indeed missed, and we look forward again to when he can visit St. Lucia. So uh, thanks very much to the Indian community here for the support that you gave on your own, for the support that you have given on your own, normally as you do as part of your being St. Lucian, and also uh, for the COVID response. I myself have had to call a number of you to get support for my constituents uh, during the COVID pandemic. So again, this is symbolic. It is just an indication of the immense and tremendous uh, level of support that we always receive, whether we ask or not. We didn't ask for this donation. I received the call and it was offered. And uh, that is, I mean, it said a friend, you know your friends, a friend in need is a friend indeed. And um, we know that there are some friends we can count on when we call on them and even when we don't. And so I just want to say again how very much a pleasure it is to be here. And on behalf of the Ministry of Health, very hard working team at the Ministry of Health, they've done such an excellent job. The Ministry of Health has done such an excellent job and of course, all of the other supporting agencies. Uh, we have not lost any lives, by the grace of God, of course. I mean, we work, but it's God who does all things. But what uh, is becoming increasingly uh, clear and obvious is that we are in, of course, a second stage, let's call it that. We have not lost lives, but we are losing livelihoods. There is a lot of fallout of COVID and uh, even the medicines I see here, some of the uh, medicines that people take for common ailments will come in very useful because people aren't able to meet even the basics now. And so this is more than just a COVID response. This is a response that uh, will assist us in our social protection measures. So thank you again very much. I uh, promise to be brief. So I wish everybody a pleasant day. And let's please stay safe, as safe as we can in the circumstances. Thank you. Thank you.